For nearly a decade, the situation was the exact opposite. After the space shuttle was retired in 2011, the United States had no human-rated spacecraft of its own. Every American astronaut heading to the ISS had to fly on Soyuz. NASA paid Roscosmos anywhere from $70 to $90 million per seat, depending on the year and contract. Between 2011 and 2020, that added up to more than $4 billion transferred from the U.S. to Russia just to keep crews rotating on the station. At the time, Roscosmos held all the leverage. Soyuz launches were routine, politically valuable, and extremely profitable. NASA had no alternative. Today, that leverage is gone. Crew Dragon now launches from Florida using two specific launch pads, Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center and Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral. Both pads are located about 12 kilometers apart and are fully certified for human spaceflight. Launch Complex 39A is the same pad used for Apollo missions and space shuttle flights, while SLC-40 was rebuilt by SpaceX after a Falcon 9 explosion in 2016 and later upgraded for crewed missions. Because Crew Dragon is certified to fly from both pads, SpaceX can continue crew launches even if one pad is shut down for inspections or repairs. This matters because crew rotations to the ISS follow a fixed six-month schedule. Missing a launch window can delay crew handovers by weeks or even months. Since 2020, SpaceX has launched between two and four Crew Dragon missions per year, each carrying four astronauts. Several of these flights have included Russian cosmonauts under seat swap agreements with Roscosmos. These agreements exist for one reason. Both the United States and Russia want to guarantee continuous presence on the ISS, even if one side's spacecraft is grounded. When a Crew Dragon lifts off from LC-39A or SLC-40, the capsule reaches orbit in about nine minutes and docks with the station roughly 19 to 24 hours later without manual piloting. Russia cannot replicate this flexibility. Soyuz crewed launches depend on a much smaller number of crew-certified pads. When one of those pads is taken offline, there is no backup that can immediately replace it. In recent years, this has led to launch gaps where Soyuz spacecraft were ready, crews were trained, but launches could not proceed because the ground systems were unavailable. Unlike Florida, where SpaceX operates two active crew pads, Russia does not have parallel infrastructure that allows rapid reassignment of a crewed launch. Cost is another area where Crew Dragon changed the game completely. During the 2010s, NASA paid Roscosmos between $70 and $90 million per Soyuz seat. The price rose steadily, as Russia realized NASA had no alternative. By the end of that decade, the United States had transferred more than $4 billion to Russia simply to keep astronauts flying to the ISS. That revenue supported Russian launch operations and infrastructure for years. Crew Dragon ended that overnight. A seat on Crew Dragon cost NASA roughly $55 million. That is significantly cheaper than Soyuz, and the money stays inside the U.S. aerospace industry. For Roscosmos, the loss of Soyuz seat sales removed one of its most stable income sources. At the same time, launch frequency dropped, infrastructure upgrades slowed, and new spacecraft development faced repeated delays. That financial pressure directly affects Russia's ability to modernize its launch system. While Russia struggles to maintain a small number of crewed launches per year, SpaceX operates at a scale no other spaceflight organization comes close to. In 2023, SpaceX launched 98 rockets. In 2024, it launched 96. In 2025, the company pushed well beyond that, passing roughly 120 launches as Falcon 9 missions accelerated to support Starlink, NASA, commercial payloads, and crewed flights. From 2023 to 2024, launch cadence remained high and stable. From 2024 to 2025, it jumped by roughly 25%. Based on SpaceX's internal targets and pad capacity, the company is aiming for around 170 launches in 2026. That would represent another increase of roughly 40% year-over-year.
At that rate, SpaceX would be averaging nearly one launch every two days. At the same time, SpaceX is pushing forward with Starship, a launch system designed to eventually replace Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Starship is the largest rocket ever built. When fully stacked, the system stands approximately 120 meters tall, making it taller than the Saturn V by more than 10 meters. At liftoff, the Super Heavy booster generates roughly 7,400 to 7,600 metric tons of thrust, produced by 33 Raptor engines burning liquid methane and liquid oxygen. The Starship upper stage adds six additional Raptor engines, bringing the total to 39 engines per launch. No other rocket in history operates at this scale. Payload capacity is the core reason SpaceX is developing Starship. In reusable mode, Starship is designed to carry 100 to 120 metric tons to low Earth orbit. In expendable configuration, that number could reach 150 metric tons. For comparison, Falcon 9 can carry about 22.8 metric tons, and Falcon Heavy in expendable mode carries around 63 metric tons. Starship more than doubles Falcon Heavy's capacity while aiming for full reusability. In 2025, SpaceX flew multiple Starship test missions. These flights tested full-duration booster burns, hot-stage separation, controlled booster descent, and upper-stage re-entry at orbital velocities approaching 7.5 kilometers per second. Later flights demonstrated improved heat shield performance and more stable attitude control during atmospheric re-entry. In 2026, SpaceX plans to significantly increase Starship launch frequency. Regulatory filings and internal targets indicate a goal of 20 to 30 Starship launches in a single year, which would exceed the total number of Starship flights conducted from the program's start through 2025 combined. This would be unprecedented for a super-heavy launch vehicle still transitioning to operational status. More importantly, 2,026 flights will not use the same vehicles flown in earlier tests. SpaceX is transitioning to Starship version 3, also known as Block 3. These vehicles incorporate structural, thermal, and propulsion upgrades intended for repeated reuse rather than experimental data collection. Version 3 Starships are expected to feature stretched propellant tanks, increasing total propellant load, and improving payload mass to orbit. The most significant change is propulsion. Block 3 Starships use Raptor 3 engines. Raptor 3 increases thrust per engine to roughly 280 to 300 metric tons, up from about 230 tons on early Raptors. The engine design is also simplified. External plumbing has been removed, part count reduced, and manufacturing processes streamlined. This reduces weight, lowers failure rates, and allows SpaceX to produce engines at higher volume. Raptor 3 is designed for rapid reuse, not refurbishment heavy turnaround. SpaceX is already preparing Flight 12, which is expected to be the first launch incorporating major Block 3 elements. Once Starship becomes operational, the economics of launch change immediately. Cost per kilogram to orbit drops dramatically because a single Starship can replace multiple Falcon 9 launches. Of course, not everything goes the way you plan. And SpaceX learned that the hard way recently. We all remember the Starship launch earlier this year that ended in another mid-flight explosion. At the time, it was framed as just another test failure in a program built around rapid iteration. But newly released FAA documents show that the consequences of that explosion. According to the report, the seventh uncrewed Starship test flight, launched in January, was destroyed less than 10 minutes after liftoff. When the vehicle broke apart, it didn't just fall into the ocean as planned. Instead, it scattered a large debris field across the Caribbean airspace, directly intersecting with busy commercial flight corridors. At the time of the explosion, two commercial passenger jets and one private aircraft were flying through the region. Combined, those aircraft were carrying around 450 passengers. One of the pilots reportedly declared May Day three times while communicating with air traffic control and made an emergency diversion to San Juan, indicating how uncertain the situation was in the cockpit. Fortunately, all aircraft landed safely and there were no injuries or damage. What made the incident more alarming is what happened immediately after the explosion. 
According to the FAA's findings, SpaceX did not notify air traffic control through the official emergency hotline right away. At breakup altitude, Starship is traveling at several kilometers per second. Debris doesn't simply fall straight down. It spreads laterally across hundreds of kilometers, carried by momentum and high-altitude winds. That's why fragments from the January explosion ended up threatening aircraft far from the launch corridor. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.